Coach Minlo I'm the, and I'm the fish vet. Today we're presented with uh, Bruce here. He's got uh, his Bruce because he's a big like a Hulk. Uh, and he's got a little lump on him on his left side near near his dorsal fin. Uh, so the owner would like me to remove it. It's good to remove lumps when they're small because it's easier and quicker to remove them. If you leave them too long, they could grow too big. Uh, they might become more vascularized which makes it uh, more uh, risky when removing because they could hemorrhage from there excessively or they could get um, injured so then when they're swimming along they might knock something uh, and then you get injuries and that can open up portals for bacterial infection so it's really good to uh, remove lumps while they're relatively small so how we're gonna do this is we're gonna anesthetize him uh, we've got a, an anesthetic uh, bath already prepared uh, and here we've got all the different equipment so with the anesthetic, uh, there's an Alfax loan which is available in pretty much every small animal clinic. Uh, other things that we'll be using is to control hemorrhage, is epinephrine uh, as a topical antiseptic. We're going to use a combination of betadine, uh, and as you know, when you put betadine on fish and you replace them with the water, it washes off. So what we've got here is uh, pretty much a, a fish bandage, which is available through our website uh, as an anti. Biotic, uh, just to make sure that we keep um, uh, bacteria away from the wound that we've created. Uh, we've got some uh, long-acting oxytetracycline. Uh, we're going to have the syringe to help with irrigating the gills and maintaining um, moisture throughout the fins and the body throughout the surgery. Uh, we've got a couple of different types of forceps here depending on what, what I feel I need at the time. And to cut off the, uh, the tumor, we're just using a, a scalpel blade. And the last thing that we also have is this is a it's, a, it's an electrocautery unit, uh, and basically it's battery powered. It works really well. Um, and if you just turn that on, you can actually sear off all the um, additional bits of uh, tumor that that you may not remove uh, fully using the scalpel blade. Right, so we're going to transfer the goldfish, uh, Bruce, into the anesthetic bath. You just maintain, keep a, a lid or a net over the top to make sure it doesn't jump out. And whenever you're working with water and things like that, it's, it's good to have battery operated pumps. So here I've got a battery operated pump. So it's unlikely that you're gonna get electrocuted uh, with water splashes on it. Uh, you might have seen me using microscopes. Uh, that's also another uh, rechargeable battery operated uh, microscope. Um, it means that you can also use it basically be just about anywhere. You can use it right next to the pond. You can use it right in the middle of an aquaculture uh, farm uh, or anywhere the aquarium is set up you don't have to look for a power point. so here is Bruce he's uh, being anesthetized you can see that uh, he allows uh, handling uh, this is good for when you're sedating him for handling but uh, for our purpose we're gonna do a fairly painful procedure so what we're gonna do is we need him fully knocked out but you can see the tumor here uh, just on this left hand side uh, it's a soft lump uh, some people describe them as looking like a molten candle wax um, with, with the same pigment as the fish. Um, people are talking about it possibly being a herpes virus infection, uh, cyprinamid herpes 1, uh, which is not the same as, um, as the one that causes carp um, hemorrhagic disease, uh, the KHV. Uh, this is a pretty benign condition. The skin just grows uh, with um, epithelial hyperplasia, so the skin is actually uh, multiplying and growing really thick, and this is the reason why you see it. Uh, some of them can recur if you don't get the whole lot out um, very well. Um, so those that have more of a fibrous look on, on, on microscopy, those are the ones that tend to recur. Um, and those that are multicentric, so you have multiple lumps around, um, they're the ones that you likely can't control really well just by doing a single surgery. Uh, but in this case, I think um, that we'll have a very good uh, prognosis that we would um, achieve a cure by removing that lump. So here's Bruce, uh, he's fully anesthetized now. Uh, just to check, uh, his uh, gill movements have slowed down. And just to check that it's not, uh, he cannot detect pain, you squeeze the uh, base of the, of the tail fin and 
and just to look for any evidence of um, movement. For surgery table, what I normally use is just a the, the top of the lid of an aquarium. Um, it's really good because basically it can collect all the um, excess water that um, happens when you are irrigating the gills uh, or the fins. Great, so to start off with the procedure, uh, here is the lump. Um, so we're just going to cut along, uh, hold your scalpel blade flat to the body uh, to try and get as much off as possible. There you go. Uh, you can see it's actually gone under the scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick out some of these scales. And the scales will grow back just like fingernails. As long as you don't cause too much damage to the scale pockets. And you can just see the way that I'm pulling them out. It's towards the direction of its growth. And just have a look at how much of these scales are actually uh, under the skin that's not present. So you can see that a lot of the scales actually underneath being covered, overlapped by the, the one that precedes it. Okay, so now that we've removed the scales, we can try and get right down to the bottom uh, and get rid of a lot of the neoplastic cells. And that white there, you can actually see there, is actually the subcutis. Uh, just a little bit of hemorrhage there. You can actually just apply um, some sterile gauze just as a pressure. Uh, over here what I'm using is the epinephrine so that will help clot the blood clot from over there. And once that's done, I'm going to continue irrigating him. So we just adjusted the fish a little bit so you can see better. So once you've removed the lump, um, uh, before we do that, we're going to try and get rid of all the excess bits that remain. So we're going to use this electrocautery equipment. It's a battery operated one. You can see uh, that when it turns on, it, it goes red. Um, this is actually an improvisation that I did. Um, actually, the initial purpose of this was actually to um, help with tying flies uh, that people use for fishing uh, basically it's just enough the fish's flesh is um, delicate enough that we can actually use this on the fish um, try not just do it as very soft dabs uh, don't hold it there for any significant period of time um, you, you can actually start smelling it's like you're frying salmon on your frying pan so hopefully you've had your lunch before you do this okay so now we've um, cauterized the edges of the tumor we're just going to apply some betadine and then we're just going to apply the powder gel in thin layers the fish bandage now hold the um, betadine in place Great, and uh, just before recovery, we're just going to give him some anti-inflammatories. I'm just going to give it into the muscle at the base of the pelvic fin. And some antibiotics, so this is oxytetracycline. Uh, so he's just about to wake up now.
just give them a quick drench over with some clean water. So now we're just going to pick Bruce up and put him back into the water. So you can actually uh, try and revive him either by moving him back and forth through the water like this or you can use a syringe and just pump water through his mouth or you can actually use an uh, if it's a big enough fish you can use a power head uh, and just put it in the front there and pump water through Or really small fish where you can't handle them with two hands um, sometimes you can actually uh, jiggle them like a tea bag uh, up and down it's oh, trying to move okay. so you can see now he's starting to move and while he's recovering, I'd just like to show you how you take samples for laboratory testing. Great, so here's Bruce, here's your lump. Uh, so we're just going to investigate whether this lump is going to be due to herpes virus. Uh, we should be able to detect them either by electron microscopy just to actually look uh, for the virus particles or we can do molecular testing like PCR, looking for the DNA of the virus. Uh, we can also look for them on, on microscopy, on histology. So basically to do all those things, what we need is a neutral buffered formalin for preserving, this is for histopathology testing, uh, virus transport media, which will nuke out any of the bacteria and preserve the viruses. Um, so you can do your molecular testing, cell cultures, uh, and things like that. Uh, or, and then you can also put them into a, a sterile Appendorf tubes to hold frozen so that you've got viable um, viruses that we want to try and get. So we've got a fairly little lump so we want to divide it up evenly. Uh, so for histology basically you just slice fish, the tissue uh, and then just put that in there uh, to preserve in formalin. Uh, for the virus transport media, uh, again another small slice uh, would, would be sufficient. Uh, you can also take a swab of it and put it in there. And for the Appendorf tube, uh, basically it's, there's no preservative in there. Basically just keep it frozen, uh, send it to the laboratory, uh, and then they can keep it in minus 80 degrees Celsius, uh, and then that should keep. So make sure that, that your lump uh, gets inside the Fixative. Great, so what's the uh, post-operative care for Bruce? Basically, uh, we've given him uh, anti-inflammatory. I think that's good to, to last for about two, three days. Uh, and also the long-acting oxytetracycline is also effective for three days, uh, the injectable that we use. So uh, post-operative care is basically just feed him up, keep him good, clean water uh, so that we can uh, prevent bacterial infection uh, setting in onto the wound. Uh, we already put topical antiseptic uh, and with the um, fish bandage so that will pr provide a, a more lasting residual effect and I think that's sufficient time for the epithelium, the, the skin to grow over that wound uh, the cells migrate very quickly in aquatic animals um, and so yeah that's not really much any any real post-operative care that you need apart from uh, putting him back into nice clean water. Mm -hmm.